Look at you, sport. A regular junior shutterbug. And it appears you've picked up a new trick from that big galoot. Now get back to the Sinclair Deluxe and just bust through that mess blocking your way. It's yours. You are evolving fast, but your heart is getting weaker. I can keep you alive, but you must find me. Introduction by the host. Come out from drop, poor little girl. <laughs>
for grace. The paradise of Andrew Ryan was most unkind. She spoke against him in song, and he had her blacklisted. It left her penniless. But in the family, she has found hope, a reason to draw breath. Ask yourself, Delta, do you deserve... to take it from her. <laughs> I wish I could publish this stuff. It's newsman pay dirt. Sinclair says Ryan's making a move against Sophia Lamb, and they want to cut me in on the action. They're building a case that Lamb's a closet pinko, sort of an undercover thing. So I cozy up to this guy Wales, who works for Lamb, making like I want to join up. Then I find out whether he grew his beard for Jesus. <laughs> Or Karl Marx. Send your daughter. <laughs> Imbecile. Face me, will you? Huh? Oh, don't worry, darling. Coward. They'll be back. Come back. <laughs> you won't stop. Just rev up that drill of yours and slam right through that pile of junk blocking your way. Old Papa's drops the worst neighborhood in Rapture, but it's a hell of an opportunity to raise up some uh, affordable housing. When Atlantic Express was constructing their luxury passenger line, this place was hollowed out beneath as flop houses for the railway crew. Nobody was supposed to reside down here long term, but when you're broke in this town? Now, Gracie was on the top floor. Get on up there and persuade her to give you that override key.
Snatcher's headed up into the hotel family. He wants me so he can get to Eleanor. Tin Daddy feels no guilt. Tin Daddy feels no pain. But we are the family and we can teach him how. Ryan told me that in Rapture, it didn't matter where you came from. Bunk! Times got hard, and all our old bigotries bubbled right back up. But Dr. Lamb showed us that down under the skin, down under the money, down under our very name, we are family. Another day waiting for Harry to come home. I told him not to speak up against Mr. Ryan's policies, and now he's missing. Just never came home. I went by the bookstore, and all his books are gone, too. I don't know what to do. Now I have to deal with that awful Sinclair just to have a roof over my head. Grace's room is just up ahead. Now, she's been sending all manner of unkindness your way, so I'm not particular as to how you take that key away from her, but she's old, and this grudge against you was based on a misunderstanding. <sighs>
both die tonight, monster. I, because your kind has killing in its nature, and you, because there's no way the family will let you stroll out alive with that key. I'm ashamed. I've always been loyal to your real mother, Eleanor. Always trusted her with my secrets. But I lost you. What will the doctor think of me now? you're here for. Go on, take it. I won't have you touching me. Dr. Lamb trusted me to care for her child, and I tried. But baby Eleanor disappeared, and then one day I see her walking with you, looking wrong. And when I tried to hold her, you knocked me down broke my jaw. So I'm ready, baby snatcher. Come on in and finish the job. Your call, friend. Grace is unarmed for what it's worth. You're a bigger man than I am, Chief. Maybe next time she'll think twice about pointing fingers before all the facts are in. Now, let's be on our way. Eleanor's waiting. You had me under a gun, yet you just walk away? No monster alive turns the other cheek. No monster does that. A thinking man does that. I know that Dr. Lamb is no liar, but she's got to be wrong about you. Doesn't seem right now, letting you walk into that bushwhack waiting outside. I can't call off the family, but I can whisper a bit and improve your odds. These whirlybirds are custom jobs by an old friend. I'm afraid this is all I can do for now. Someone must be on the property. 